This video is brought to you by the Corsair Obsidian 350D Micro ATX case. Exceptional expansion and cooling flexibility for compact, high-performance PCs. Visit Corsair.com obsidian to learn more. Now NVIDIA never sends me boxes, so I put the GTX 760 in an old box that I had lying around, also from NVIDIA, but it was for an older card. This is the third in the G4 700 series of cards, so we've seen the 780 as well as the 770 already, but the 760 comes in to replace the outgoing 660 Ti in that all important $250 price point. So there's been quite a few tweaks over the older 660 Ti. It still uses that same GK104 core that we've come to know and trust from the previous generation cards, but there have been a few tweaks. Number one is clock speeds have been increased. The old 660 Ti had a boost clock of 980 megahertz, whereas the 760 has a base clock of 980, it goes all the way up to 1033 megahertz, and that is running at stock speeds for this card. Next up is it has 32 ROPs, that is raster operators versus 24 ROPs. What those do is they are more sort of oomph later on in the graphics rendering pipeline, aiding in things like anti-aliasing that are done close to the end of the processing of the image that goes on. Okay, last but not least, we get a wider memory bus. So we've gone from a 192-bit interface on the old card to a 256-bit interface on the new GTX 760. That isn't to say that everything has been increased though. The GTX 760 has 1,152 CUDA cores versus 1,344 CUDA cores in the old 660 Ti. So check out our performance review where we're really going to dive into the performance of this card versus the one it's replacing, but some things have been upgraded and some things have been taken away and we end up with a very interesting part here. One other thing about this card is that because it's a 256-bit bus card, you can have a 2 gig or a 4 gig configuration depending on the manufacturer versus 3 gigs max on the 660 Ti. Now, now when I talk about the card physically, there's not really that much to say because we've got the traditional uh, blower style shroud that we see with NVIDIA graphics cards. We've got that silence optimized fan with the new acoustic profile. That's cool. That's new with 700 series as well as Titan that keeps it from ramping up when it's close to a threshold that it wants to maintain. We've got that same dual DVI, HDMI and DisplayPort output at the back that gives us NVIDIA 3D vision surround with three monitors and one auxiliary monitor monitor, PCI Express 3.0, NVIDIA SLI support up to three-way with two SLI fingers on the top of the card. And we've got that uh, PCB extension part at the back here that makes the card nine inches total in length. Now, the reason they did that is that there's not enough room to have the heatsink itself over the GPU and then a fan next to it unless you actually extend the card a little bit. So in order to maintain that blower style, that's what they've done. On the back of the card, we've got some of the RAM chips, whereas the other half are on the other half of the card and that is pretty much it. It's got a clean aesthetic with a GeForce GTX branding present on the top as well as two six pin PCI Express connectors. And when I say all important $250 price point, what am I talking about? I used to work at a retailer, so I know that that's where most people are spending their money, somewhere between $149 and $249. So when Nvidia says weapon of choice, they're talking about that gamer who doesn't have the money for a Titan or a GTX 680. They just want to run the latest games at high settings at 1080p or 1920 by 1200 and get a great experience. So the example that they're using is Metro Last Light. With this card versus previous generation cards such as an older 275 that would have been in a similar price range, now you can crank up Metro Last Light, whereas with your older card you couldn't, and it's all about delivering that consistent experience. Speaking of experience, GeForce Experience is of course supported, so Shadow Play is coming soon, meaning it uses the onboard H.264 encoder in order to record your gameplay on the fly. More on that in an upcoming video for sure, as well as automatic driver updates, as well as recommendations for what settings you can run all of your games at. Speaking of games, we've got upcoming games that are going to be meant to be played on GeForce titles. So we've got <clears throat> Assassin's Creed 4, Black Frag, Watch Dogs, Splinter Cell, Blacklist, Witcher 3, and Batman Arkham Origins that are all coming up optimized for GeForce right out of the gate. And when it comes to performance, 249 is an aggressive price point when you consider that this GPU at this kind of a level was not available below around 299 so with the 660 ti being at a higher price in the last generation of cards so we are definitely seeing some trickle down in terms of the price with performance being maintained or even improved versus the last gen card and 
compared to something like a 7950, I think we're gonna find that 760 is a very competitive card, but hey, don't take my word for it in the unboxing because I haven't tested it yet, I'm just unboxing it. So check out our 1080p performance review of the GTX 760. Don't forget to like this video as well as leave a comment about what you think of the GTX 760. Are you disappointed by Nvidia's latest card? Do you think it's fantastic? Let us know under the video, we do read those comments. Share the video if you thought it was great, and as always guys, don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.